Mr. Sanchez, have a seat. Well, welcome back. Thank you. Now, uh, I was telling Pancho backstage that when he plays another salsa tune, uh, we actually encourage dancing. So please get up and dance. Don't sit in your seat. Just if you're in the middle, go off to the side a little bit so you don't uh, annoy everybody else. But please dance. Now, uh, Pancho, let me ask you. Uh, most people assume you're either Cuban or Puerto Rican, but you're from Texas. Yeah. <laughs> what, what happened? How, how did you get into this music, and, and where was your start? Well, um, you're absolutely correct. Everybody thinks I'm from Cuba or Puerto Rico, but uh, I was born in Laredo, Texas, down south, south Texas, uh, half a block from the Rio Grande. And uh, on this side of the border, Laredo, Texas, the Mexico side is Nuevo Laredo. Um, I'm the youngest of 11 kids. And uh, thank God that all my brothers and sisters are alive and well right now. So to, to answer that question completely, I guess, is what happened for me uh, is we moved from Laredo, Texas to Los Angeles, California when I was four years old. And my older brothers and sisters caught the first wave of the mambo and cha-cha-cha music that came from Cuba, Puerto Rico, New York City, Los Angeles. And that's how it happened in the late 50s and early 60s. So they got into the big mambo and cha-cha-cha crave. So every day of my life, I heard music of the records of uh, Tito Puente, Tito Rodriguez, Machito, Orquesta Aragon from Cuba, and Cal Jader from San Francisco. And then you ended up playing with Cal for seven, eight years. And then I ended up uh, working with the Cal Jader band. I joined Cal Jader's band in uh, New Year's Eve, 1975. And did you get any great. rehearsals? Or did you just get on the stage at, on New Year's Eve? Well, actually, what happened is I sat in with his band. He asked me to sit in with him one night because he had heard about me when Cal Jader was down in Los Angeles because Cal Jader was from San Francisco. And he was playing at Concerts by the Sea in Redondo Beach. That was Howard Rumsey's club. And uh, I went to go see him play that night, and he called me up to sit in. And uh, he actually told me right before I was going to sit in, he said, when I bring you up, you, we're going to play a song that uh, you won't know the breaks. We, it's, uh, we have not recorded it yet. Actually, it was Manteca. And they said, but we have a new version with new breaks. When the, when the breaks come in the tune, just lay out because you won't know them. And then after we do the breaks, jump in, you know? So I said, oh, okay. So I started playing. And when the breaks, those new breaks come along, I played them, you know? And he looked at me like, like that. And after, after I sat in with him, he said, how did you know those breaks? We have not recorded that song yet. I said, well, remember you were here in Los Angeles four months ago? You guys played that song. And by watching you, I learned the breaks then. And I still remember them right now at that time. <laughs> You're hired. <laughs> so let's, let's talk about this this pairing of Dizzy and Chano Pozo. I, I didn't actually realize this until about four hours ago. I was, I was doing a little Google research because uh, I'm very professional. Uh, <laughs> but one thing I didn't know about Cubano B, Cubano Bob, it was actually commissioned in 1946 by Carnegie Hall. W one assumes that you know they were just hanging out in Cuba or they're hanging out in New York and they're jamming together. But this was this piece of music uh, that became the album was commissioned by Carnegie Hall in '46, recorded in in '47, and then Chano Pozo died, uh, was murdered actually in 1948. So this is this is old music. This is 65, 66 year old music. Why why is it still uh, relevant today? Why do people still listen to it? Why is why is it still known as as one of the seminal Latin jazz uh, albums of 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 all time. Well, you know, basically the way it happened is, you know, I had the honor and pleasure of working with Mario Bowser's band, who was the brother-in-law and musical director of Machito's Orchestra. I knew Mario Bowser very well. And Mario told me the story that 
when uh, Dizzy Gillespie was, of course, here in the, from the United States, the Chan Apostle came from Cuba and spoke no, no English at all. And of course, Dizzy didn't speak Spanish. Uh, Mario Bauza uh, introduced Chan Apostle to Dizzy Gillespie. And, uh, um, and um, that's when it actually really started coming together. Uh, and I don't know if those dates are exactly right. I think Chano uh, got killed earlier. I think it was like 1945 or something, like 44, 45, I think. Um, and of course, um, they met each other. We know how great Dizzy Gillespie was. I had the honor and pleasure of Dizzy Gillespie working with this band, my band, and uh, he also played with the Cal Jader band when I was with Cal Jader. So I did spend uh, many moments and days with Dizzy just hanging out with him. There's only one Dizzy Gillespie and he was the greatest. Um, so he was a very uh, uh, great musician, always had ideas, natural ideas. And Chano Pozo was also a great musician. He was famous in Cuba before he came to New York City. And he had already written some songs in Cuba that were famous already. And nobody knew who he was in the United States at that time. Uh, it ends up that with those two great energies together, Chano Pozo was a very tough street guy, you know, from the streets, but yet he was a very fine musician and he was a great dancer and, of course, a conga drummer, like I am, you know. And the, the, the story goes is that John Oposo, uh was going to uh, buy some uh -oh, marijuana for a, a friend or for a, a guy he had met. The guy gave him $10, and, and John o said, yeah, I can buy you a bag of marijuana. Well... About two days went by, and Chano Pozo was at the Rio Cafe in Spanish Harlem in the daytime during the week, and he was kind of uh, 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 entertaining a lady friend. And they were listening to the jukebox, having a couple of drinks in the afternoon, and this gentleman walked by and said, wow, there's Chano, you know, let me go ask him if he's got my stuff, you know. <laughs> And he went in there and, and said, Chano, like, of course, everything was in Spanish, you know. Oye, oh, yeah, Chano, que pasa, man? Tu tienes, do you have my stuff? And then uh, Chano Pozo said, uh, like, once again, I've got to remind you, Chano Pozo was a very tough street guy. So he told the guy, I ain't got your stuff. Get out of here. Can't you see I'm busy uh, entertaining this beautiful lady? And the guy said, Chano, do you got my stuff or not? And he says, look, I already told you, get out of here. The guy said, all right. And he left. Chano continued hanging out with his friend. I guess he went out to his car, got a gun, and walked right back in and said, Chano, bam, bam, bam. And it was over, just like that. And the reason why I know that story is true, because a good friend of mine, we just, we just came, we were in Miami, Florida last weekend. We played in Miami. And a good friend of mine named Dario told me that he, had, th this friend of mine got in a car accident about, this was about 25 years ago, and he was laying in the hospital from this car accident. He was in the hospital, my friend was, for about a, a week. He said, Poncho, there was a, a real old guy in the bed next to me. He goes, the guy was coughing, and the, he says, the guy was dying. And he said, I didn't pay much attention just because I knew that they, they told me this guy, He's had, he's, he's gonna die. He's, the guy was about 80 something years old and he was not doing well. So my friends, some friends came to visit him. So they, they were talking about music and Latin jazz and, and all like that. And then his friends left. He said, finally, the old guy in the bed next to him said, hey. And my friend said, yeah, what do you want? He said, you like Latin jazz? And my friend said, yeah, of course, you know. My friend was a, a, a DJ, a disc jockey in, in uh, Miami. He says, yeah, I'm a disc jockey for Latin jazz music. And he goes, do you know who John Pozo is? And my friend said, yeah, of course. And he said, yeah, you know who that is? Yeah. He says, I'm the guy that shot him. <laughs> Wham. <laughs> it, was, it was the guy who shot Chano because we checked the names and everything. It was him. <laughs> 
So, I mean, sorry, I'm just telling you the truth and the, the real truth, how it really happened. You know what I mean? So, but John Oposo, what I, what I tell people is, John Oposo was in this country only for about four short years. Can you imagine if John Oposo would have lived uh, 30 more years, how much more music we would have had of John Oposo? But anyway, that didn't happen, and here we are today celebrating John Oposo and Dizzy Gillespie. So, Dizzy was, was famous for bringing so many musicians and, and introducing to the States, Arturo Sandoval is one. Danilo Perez, who's gonna be with us in a couple of months, is another one. David Sanchez, uh, yeah. Claudio Roditi, who's gonna be here next. Uh, what was it about Dizzy that all these guys wanted to, to play with him and, and, and what was it about their musicianship that he, what, what did he see in these people that weren't playing straight American jazz, they were playing Brazilian jazz and, and Cuban jazz and, and Puerto Rican jazz? Well, it's just, first of all, Dizzy Gillespie was a master. Dizzy Gillespie knew music very well, all types of music. He was, uh, he was a master. He was a brain. I mean, this guy was somebody special. So, of course, he would handpick out musicians that impressed him or that he really liked the way they sound, the way they played, the way they approach their instrument, the way they approach music, even is the way you approach, approach life in general. I mean, people like Dizzy, that's important to them. And, and my, myself, personally, I, I learned a great deal from being around Dizzy uh, about that kind of stuff and being around people like Tito Puente, Mongo Santa Maria, and Cal Jader. I, I learned from these great musicians just just what life's about in general and, and how to approach things. Everybody has their approach and their style. Nobody's perfect. But, you know, I was lucky enough to be a young conga drummer growing up, and I had the chance to work with all these people that are all gone now. So I think Dizzy just was able to recognize special people and special things, you know. Well, thanks, Pancho. We, we hope you come back to Toronto many, many times. Don't make it such a, a, a gap between the next time. Uh, we're going to get to the second half of the music in about a minute and a half. Thanks very much for coming. Thank you very much. Thanks, Toronto.